everyone. Welcome to Special Interests with Bob and Donna. Donna Durasmo and Bob Banfelder. Uh, we have a special treat for you. Usually you'll see us in our, our living room, but here we are in our den. It, this is the work room, a multitask room, <laughs> where Bob does his writing for his novels and his uh, nonfiction books on fishing and hunting, and where he also ties flies for fly fishing. So what he's going to do today is tie a unique fly that he has created and that catches big fish. So I'm going to let him go and um, I just want to remind you that um, Bob is an award-winning author and you can follow him on Facebook as well as Twitter at Robert at R. Banfelder. So I'm going to let Bob talk to you about fly tying and the the fly that he created and is catching fish with, catching dinner. Okay? Okay, right. now you had mentioned big fish. We don't want to use hyperbole. We catch big fish with these uh, flies uh, that I tie, but we also catch, catch smaller small fish, fish too. And by small fish, anything from, for the freshwater fish, we catch brookies, brook trout, brown trout, rainbow trout. Um, going to the Nessequag River, Conaquat River, Carmen's River. But out here, we're on the water. The water, the Peconic River is right in back of this home. And uh, we catch some beautiful saltwater species, namely big bluefish we do. We get some nice bass, uh, weak fish, and... Uh, Once in a while, we'll grab a fluke. Once and it's a fluke to grab it's a fluke, a fluke to with grab the a fluke, uh, with a fly rod. With a fly and rod, but with the, uh, sometimes lure, but happens. Sometimes we do. Okay, so I'm okay. going to step back and I'm going to let you go to work. Okay. Um, first of all, I explain. This is a creation of my own. This fly is very unique, and it started like this. Um, an a strong acquaintance of mine, Wayne Nestor, uh, Donna. Uh, that was Suffolk Life. See, I'm, I want you in life. here so that you'll be able to answer the questions that I can't answer. Okay. So, uh, Wayne Nestor turned me on to, well, he implanted in my brain, he said, the eyes of a fly will um, have predator fish home in on um, uh, its, its uh, on the fish that you're targeting. So, I came to a point, I reached a point where virtually every fly that I tied, where I could, I put eyes on it. But we kept talking about the eyes of a fly, the eyes of a fly, to a point where I said, you know what, and it started as a lark. It was really a joke. I said, I'm going to tie a fly that in essence is the fly itself. And I called it the Bobby Bees. Uh, bullseye um, fly and uh, as I said it started off as a joke as a lark and I tied this thing I refined it and we caught some very very mm -hmm. big fish because the uh, predator fish namely out here in the Peconic River the blues and the uh, big blues and the uh, bass uh, hit this fly like there's no tomorrow so there's several steps involved, and what I'm going to do is explain first the feather that we're going to use to attach um, the eyes to. So I'm going to reach here for a cape, and this is the cape of the Lady Amherst pheasant, and this thing has seen some days here. I received, I purchased this many a year ago. Again, this is the Lady Amherst uh, pheasant. Okay, my director is positioning this thing so you get a better view there. And we're going to be dealing specifically with the feathers that are in the neck portion. 
the black and white feathers, you'll see um, a black periphery with a black bar, uh, vertical bar across it. And you can spend a small fortune for a cape, but maybe to get started, I suggest for beginners, you simply get the neck portion. You can buy the neck portion for, I believe, 10 to $12, depending on where you uh, shop. Okay, so I'll put this aside, and we're going to pull a feather off here. And when I do this, you will see another feather behind it. Enzo, do I have that in focus? This feather here. I'm going to pull that off in a second. Okay. All right. And this feather is referred to as the gimp feather, G-I-M-P. And here's where Donna comes in. You want to uh, mention the name of the fellow who created this one? Not the fly that I'm tying oh, now. Lacey but Lacey Gee, way back in the, uh, in the 40s. And who did he again. fish with? Erwin Sias, Elias, I believe the pronunciation okay. is. Okay, and Gee is the creator of this fly. And let me tell you, we go back into the late 40s. Actually, when the fellow was fishing the fly, we're talking about the early 40s, maybe 1943. We're talking like 75 years ago. How come I'm so quick with the math? Huh? Because, because you're 75 because, years old. <laughs> because I'm 75 years old. So around 90, by 1950, he had uh, marketed these uh, flies called the gimp fly. Now, Donna, what do we call this feather. Do you remember? This is a test, a tippet. This is the tippet feather. They refer to this as the tippet feather and the feather behind it at the base of this tippet feather again is the gimp feather. So we will not be using the gimp feather for, fly for tying this fly, but uh, in the future, maybe the next show, we'll be tying the gimp. But what I do is, I take this feather and I put it aside, depending on its size. I store them. You'll see a bigger package here. A bigger, uh, a bigger feather. And you'll see smaller feathers to tie on very, very small hooks for freshwater trout. Again, namely the brooks, the brownies, the brooks, the browns, and the uh, rainbow trout. So where am I going to put this? Well, this is a little bit, but now there's some about that size. So I'm just going to store it here. Now, we are going to glue eyes onto these feathers, but there's a trick to it. Otherwise, you'll make yourself crazy. So, I pull two feathers off of this, and here they, and here they are. They're kind of nice and straight, okay? That's what I start with, okay? And then, I will be gluing well, I've done it ahead of time, or otherwise we'd be here forever because there's a drying process. Um, I use, for the fly that we'll be tying, the bigger eye that you see here. So we'll keep this simple and we'll simply say that this is a large fly, uh, um, a large eye, a medium size eye, and a small eye. And to give you just some idea, some perspective, we're talking five sixteenths for the big. We're talking approximately a quarter of an inch for the uh, medium one and three sixteenths of an inch for the small. So for very small hooks, we'd be using a very small eye. Okay, so what I do is I take this off of a card. These are actually glued on here so they won't come off so I don't lose this in... Uh, communicating here, but they peel off very easily from a um, piece of paper like this, and I carefully 
stick them like I'm showing you here onto the feather between the black periphery of the outer edge of this feather and the bar. Okay? And then you allow this to dry. If you don't allow it to dry before doing the next step, you'll kind of make a mishmash. Here's one that I'm not happy with. You can see that the eye slid all over the place. See, it's off center, it's off kilter. So, what you want to do is to fix the eyes like I showed you, and then turn them over and get yourself some two-part five-minute epoxy. And I won't do this now because it's already done, but just to give you an idea, I would squirt equal amounts of the epoxy on here. And then with my dubbing needle, or bodkin, not to be confused with a bobbin. We'll talk about that perhaps later on. I take my epoxy and I just touch the back of this and the back of this where you see the circle through it, where we affix the eye. The back of this eye is where you want the epoxy. The back of the eye is where you want the epoxy. And you let it dry. And then, when it's dry, you can attach the two and it comes out like this. It won't slide all over the place. You can place that pretty neatly. Okay? And we're going to be ready to tie this eye in place on the hook. So I'll get these feathers out of the way. I'll reach for Oh, you can see here I have all kinds of thread. Maybe Enzo can home in on some of those um, tools. Thread. Now, this thread is called Danville's Flat Waxed Nylon. Okay. And it's tied onto a bobbin. Um, we'll be doing another show down a pike where we'll explain all these tools and how to start for beginners. But at this point, fly tires out there who have been tying a while are certainly familiar with these um, tools. Now, although this thread is waxed, I'm not happy enough with that. I like to take some wax, and this is called Wonder Wax by Overton. There's all kinds of wax for this application, but this is the one I have. I have another one here that I don't think I've even gotten into yet. Um, Waspy, famous name. Uh, premium dubbing wax. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to wax the wax thread just so that I have enough on here just to put it through. Now professional fly tires they'll have this wrapped in two seconds but we want to go nice and slow to show you. You wrap over itself at the eye of the hook, behind the eye of the hook. So I'm going to form a nice base. I'll go slow. Now what's marvelous about this thread, get my scissors here. Okay. The thread I'm wrapping around this hook, which is a size 2 slash O. Not a 2, but a 2 slash O. It's a bigger hook that you would use in salt water predominantly. Not for um, small trout. We'll be talking on smaller hooks, such as mustad hooks. Um, but anyways, I'm going to wrap a nice 
thread base. Okay, go slow. So I can do this real, but we'll go nice and slow so you get an idea. Now, where do you wrap to? I'm going to wrap to the bend of this hook. Now you see I'm getting in the way of the point of the hook and the barb here. So I could snag it and maybe just, you know, do damage to the thread. So now I come in nice and carefully. I get away from it. Okay, I'm still going down till I reach the bend of the hook. Now I'm happy. Now I started to say what I love about this thread is that you can make it thinner by simply twirling this around. It'll become nice and tight. So if the thread is becoming, if you're doing an application where the thread is a little too wide, if you will, you can spin this and make it nice and tight. I'm going to come back a little bit, come one off on it. And to stop it from spinning around once you've spun it, simply just let enough out so that it rests. Otherwise, oh, it's going to make a lie right up. Now it's starting to spin. See what I'm saying? So just leave it here for a moment. Now we're going to put a tail on this 2 slash O hook here. And we could use black hooks. We could use, uh, I like to stay away from the pure, pure silver. We can use uh, what they call black nickel. It's not so important. It's more, I think, in, in my mind than whatever. I'm going to take a feather from a hen. Hen feather. And I'm going to now I'm going to put some more on there. Just a little bit. And I'm going to make a tail on this hook. Okay. Now I want to come back up, otherwise I'll be hitting the light up here, right? I've got this pretty nice and tight for this application. Now the trick is, and we'll be talking about this in a future uh, taping here, you want to make sure that this stays on top. So if you can get what they call a pinch wrap, get this between this thumb and your forefinger, or your thumb and your index finger, and get this in here tight on top. Now I'm going to turn this over to see, yeah, it's on top. It's not on the side. It's not on the side here, and we'll make this a little bit neater cover that exposed dun, D-U-N, colored feather. And we'll, this isn't so critical here, but we'll cover it up, make it, make it nice and, and neat. Okay, so we've got the tail. And so this is what the fly is going to look like when we're done. So the eye that you see here is not a dome-shaped eye, okay? This is a dome-shaped 3D holographic eye as opposed to a flat prismatic Mylar taped fly eye. You can use either. This is what I started with. 
uh, about 2006, I had created this fly. And I had it published in a couple of magazines. And I've improved on, we, we all hear, new and improved, new and improved. Well, by putting on the dome-shaped eye, it helps the fly track through the water column. As you're stripping in line on your fly, uh, on your fly rod, it tracks well. And I thought initially that if I went to a dome-shaped the heavier eye, it would get in the way of the gap of the hook in this periphery here. Um, it doesn't. The way I tie it, when this fly, when a fish hits, this will simply brush aside this way or that way. Um, I think I'll go over here. Ironically, and this is uh, Donna. Yeah. What is today's date? Today is the 25th. Today's the 25th? Of September. Okay. So yesterday, this fly caught a very nice size bass. It is my personal best. I, it's ironic that I was used, uh, that this happened yesterday. Now, I have probably caught, without exaggeration, five or six... Well, let's go on the other side just to make sure. Four, at least four, probably two blues and two bass. Is it beaten up? It's, not, it's hardly beaten up. This gets pushed out of the way. And let's say that it does get beaten up. Maybe after about six, seven fish, this may be destroyed. So what you simply do is perform radical surgery. You would take a... Well, so here we go. You would take a razor blade, single edge so you don't hurt yourself, strip everything off, and start anew. Why? Because these hooks, good hooks, and I only use good hooks, are a bit expensive, but you want quality hooks. It's the connection between you and that fish. Let's see what we can do here. I'm going to leave this about midpoint and I'm going to pick up these two feathers that we had glued before. I'm going to line it up periphery in the periphery of this hook. Put my finger here and start to wrap. I see I'm going to be a little too short so I'm going to come away a little bit. Pick it up again. See, when you're doing this yourself, no one is standing over you. You take your time. You don't have to rush. And now we're going to put this on here and lock it in. Get these out of the way. All right. Looks kind of messy, but it's. we'll see what happens. We'll lock that in good. We'll take our scissors and trim off the extra. And now we'll wrap carefully, neatly, to the eye of the hook. Okay, don't worry about these hairs that are in the way. When we're done, this will be nice and clean. Now I'm going to reach for some deer hair because we're going to put some black and white deer hair on here. I want to take just a little bit of the white, and that's this is white bucktail. This is the tail of the deer bucktail, white bucktail, and this is dyed black, obviously bucktail. And 
and I'm going to mingle. I'm, go I'm going to use the, uh, my thumb, finger, and roll them till we get a nice tail. The fly that he's going to work on with you today, continue as we, with. with continue <laughs> with, is featured in his uh, fishing book, the Fishing Smart Anywhere Handbook for Saltwater and fresh water. So there's a lot of recipes in here for fly fishing, how-tos, and um, very comprehensive. It's available both in paperback and ebook formats on Amazon in case you're interested. In addition, uh, Bob's uh, fly that he's going to tie today is titled Bob B's Black and White Bullseye Fly is also available on eBay for purchase if you're not a fly tire. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to have uh, Bob do his recap and continue constructing this terrific fly. Thank you, Donna. Okay. We left off last time. We were just about to put on the uh, wings, uh, the top wing on this uh, bullseye fly. Bobby's bullseye fly. And we had taken bucktail, white bucktail, and we had taken black bucktail and mingled the two, if you recall. And what we have here, we have three different size stackers. Um, before you do that, why don't you show the feathers again of what you used and you taped okay. and the eyes so that they know. Okay. We... Um, we took the feather, we took the tippet feather from the Lady Amherst pheasant. Okay, it has a black periphery and has um, a black horizontal bar. And we place the eye, we place the large, the one on top here, we glued different steps, the eye within that periphery and the bar. We centered it. Okay. So, let's take the deer hair that we mingled, and this is really not a necessary step. Uh, where are my scissors, hon? This is why you got to stand over and make I lost my scissors. All right, we'll just take another pair here. Okay. And I could simply cut the ends of the feather like this. But let's say they were a little uneven and I wanted to get them nice and even again. Okay. Again, this is really to have you become familiar with some of the tools involved. I put the hairs in here. What is that called? A stacker. This is called a stacker. Bang it down and I carefully separate the two. Okay. And I have my hairs nice and even. But like I said, I could simply just cut the uh, the hairs like this. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, there are generally what they call under fur. It's not really fur, it's a hair, but you can see some of this is coming off. So you just get anything that's loose there. We know that we want to have the wing here extend about an inch. This is not rocket science. About an inch past the bend. So we're going to come up Probably like this. That's why it's not so critical to have those ends. That's kind of like good enough there. So we're going to put it on top here. And where we're going to wrap is in front of that. Again, you're going to need to go loosely. If you go too tight, the hairs will fall off to the side and they will flare. We don't want the deer hair to flare for this fly. If we were tying a muddler minnow, the head of a muddler minnow, many of you fly tires know out there, will flare. So we just want this to be on top, stay on top. 
make sure it is. Take some more thread, lock it in. And now we're going to check ourselves and see. Okay, I see I'm not too happy. I'm going to turn this a little bit. There, now it's more on top. Maybe even come a little bit more. Okay. Wrap, wrap, wrap. Good. I'm going to take this back as far as I can so that I leave a little bit of space between the eye of the hook, the back of the eye of the hook, and where I am at this point. It's locked in there pretty decently. And we're going to clip that off. Now, the last time we were talking about hooks, and I said the hook that we'll be dealing with for salt water, for salt water application, will be a 2 slash O, a 2 O. And I really didn't mention any particular hook name, but you would want quality hooks, such as Gamagatsu. Very, very well-known um, hook. Uh, owner, O-W-N-E-R, is a, an excellent, excellent hook. Um, you want to name another one, Don? Another name come to mind? Okay, the Mustad is a famous name. I use Mustad for freshwater tying on very, very small hooks, say up to a 16. And let's digress for a moment and talk about small flies. If I was to tie this on a very small hook, we're not going to tie it on a 2-0. We're going to be talking about a minuscule, might even have one here, I don't have one handy, but we would be talking about maybe a 6. That would be the largest that I would tie. Now, when you go from a 6 to an 8, you're not the number goes up, but the size of the hook goes down. So consequently, um, an 8 will be smaller than a 6. Um, an 8, a 6, a 4, and uh, I'm sorry, six, an 8, six, eight, eight, eight ten. 10, 12, 14, 16. 16, and that's about as small as I tie. Um, if you look at a typewritten page and look at the question mark with a size, say, 11 or 12 font, that's what we're talking about. Now, a lot of people tie, and a lot of angler, uh, fly tires, uh, don't realize uh, they stop tying at 24. My God, I'm saying 16 is about the smallest that I tie. You can go from 24 to 26 to 28. To 30 and 32. My God, you can you can barely see this hook, and you can fly, and a pro can tie material onto this very small hook. And believe it or not, you will catch uh, some pretty impressive fish. As a matter of fact, I was watching a video where a fellow tied on a 32 hook for freshwater trout. All right, let's get back to this. Now we're going to finish wrapping this. Ah, and it's important to point out, Donna was saying, you can go into my book. Is this the uh, display copy now? Okay. Um, and it'll show this fly that we're tying. However, comma, it will not have the dome-shaped eyes, and it will not have a collar on it, which we will be putting on here. A collar in front of this, a hackle collar. Why? Because this is new and improved, okay? And it, it truly is. In other words, this tracks better through the water column. And uh, the collar, really, I, I don't see an increase. Uh, you know, I'm not really catching many more fish because I put a collar on it. You can leave the fly pretty much like this. But we're going to just be a little bit fancier and put on, especially so that you will note 
how this works here. Now I'm going to leave this space here, cover up all this white. Okay, and let's look at a very handy tool now so that we get used to some tools. I'm going to be reaching for a whip finisher in two sizes. The big size helps me if I am working back here, the head of the fly is here and I'm working back here, I need a great reach. So you use a larger um, whip finisher. However, we're going to be using the smaller one. And just so that this doesn't unravel in front of us, we're going to be making a couple of turns. One, two, good enough for now. That'll hold that in place. Okay. And we're going to be putting in a collar, tying on a collar, a hackle collar. Now, I did have a feather out here, and I keep reaching for that black feather, and it disappears. So let me just go back into here. This is nice, soft, black hackle. Okay. From the uh, hen, not the rooster, but the hen. And it really doesn't matter, I'll tell you the truth. If you had a stiffer feather, And for you ladies out there saying, boy, he's making a mess here. No, Donna does not clean up after me. I clean up my own mess, right, Donna? Right. Okay. All right, so we can even cut this off here. And rather than wrapping a stem that could slip out, we'll just go up a little bit more here. Again, lock it in. Don't have to be too critical here. We'll take this stem and cut it off here. And now we're going to take this and wrap it once, twice, three times, no more. We're going to come back with the thread and kind of go through one I need a little more thread for the wrap two three push my fingers away from this thread so I don't cut the thread in lieu of thinner and there we have a nice collar I'm going to reinforce that and make sure that that's nice what, hun? Now, I'm go the head that I'm going to build up here could be round. It could be bullet-shaped. It could be cigar-shaped. Whatever you want. It's really, really not that critical. So I'm just going to spend a moment here and build up this thread head. And I'm going to come back behind the eye of the hook. And I want to secure that again with... See, actually, I want to show you, you could actually do this with your fingers. Okay? I could do that. That's what the whip finisher is basically doing. But instead of, I want to say, I want to do three or four, I would be here for, you know, a while. I'm not in a hurry, but make life a little bit simpler. One, two, three, boom. Okay. And we're going to cut this off. And we are not done yet. We are not done yet. We're going to come to a very important um, procedure here. We're going to take that epoxy that I was telling you about in the earlier show. And I'm going to take one of my pre-cut cards here. 
and Enzo or Donna, my uh, roll of paper. Oh, here we go. Let me just reach for this. Here's that black scent. That's what I was looking for before. Anyhow, we're going to take a little bit, and I do mean a little bit. The two-part epoxy that we're going to put on here, all you need is, that's so much, but that's a small amount I can get out. Equal amounts. And this stuff is you don't want to get this over any, and that's why I wipe it. And notice what I have on here. I took nail polish and I placed this on top and on the nozzle so that I get it on the right side. If I mix these up, if I mix these up, it would uh, be a real mess. It would uh, stick to one another. You'd have such a time getting it. So this makes life simple. That's a good Just tip. Keep the, it's a good tip. It's a good tip. It's a good tip. So now I'm going to take a toothpick here. This is five minute epoxy. So I have a little bit of time. I'm going to mix this together. Now, Donna, mm -hmm. I think I explained this to you. Listen. See, this would be too much to put on here. Can you see that, Enzo? See what I'm it saying? Makes. It would make it would start running. It's too much. You don't need a lot. So I take my dubbing needle and I just take a little bit and I use my hand here and here to make this steady. As a matter of fact, you know, that's still a little too much. Take a little bit off and now I put it here. Okay, here. Now I'm going to go underneath. This is where your vice that turns comes in. Good hands point, in. Donna. Good point. Vice back here doesn't turn doesn't like turn. that. You can't really do this procedure without making a mess. Now I'm going to do the sides too. Just a little bit is all you need. And this makes it virtually bulletproof. Like uh, we were talking about this in a last show. Um, and you're only I've covering the thread, right? Only covering the thread. Okay. Good point, too. You don't want to do that. Now, this will run if it was heavier, that big drop that I showed on the head of the toothpick. It would run, and then you would do this, and you would do this, but we just may leave it there for a moment. Now, go back into here. I clean this up, and immediately, if not sooner, I get this out of harm's way, okay, because that really makes a mess. And when the uh, can we see? Fish, can we see what a finished fly looks like? I don't want you to take that one out because it's still wet and drying. Is we have a finished yeah, fly Yeah, we there? can. Uh, did you see what I, I poured them out yeah, over right here? Yeah, uh, Okay, let's clean this off a bit. Okay, you'll see on different hooks I experiment. That, that's, that's a messed, messed up messy one. one. I didn't do too much. But this is what the finished nicer. fly looks like. Well, there's an eye on one side. Well, let's not confuse them with this. That's another one. This is this black hook here. This is a um, an owner hook. They're fantastic hooks. And again, if the bluefin hit, it swings out of the way. It moves out of the way. Um, this is not tied, is it? This is nicely tied. Now, um, I offer these on eBay. Do you want to tell yes, people how on, to do that? Well, uh, you'd, have to look, you'd have to look on eBay for and search Bob B's black and white bullseye fly. He has, he has them offered on eBay uh, if you're interested. If not, you can tie your own. It's really not a difficult uh, fly 
to tie. The most it's difficult not. part, I think, is getting the eyes on the feather, right? That's it. And that three step was important um, to follow the instructions that I gave it because if you don't let the glue dry on the uh, back of the eyes, it'll be sliding over. You can't mm -hmm. place it where you want. So it took me a little while to figure that out. Uh, and that's basically it. The date. Well, yes, but of that course, was we're, we're doing these shows back to back on the same that's, day. That's uh, September 24th um, down the uh, down the Peconic River. It was a catch and release. We took a quick photo of this little guy here and put him back. Um, and if you could, if he, uh, you can see the fly is actually in the in his mouth. His eye is here. And the fly is right here. So you and can you'll see notice that eyes. the eye of my artificial fly is uh, the same as that fish's eye. It is a um, black uh, pupil, and, and, and you have the, uh, the gold iris. Gold iris. Uh, show them the bigger, f because on that same day we got a 20, uh, legal is this 28 is, inches. Um, the other one was the, 26. This is the smaller one. No, this, I think this is the same one. No, see, that's, oh, that's, that's the Let's big guy. Unfortunately, I missed the legal size limit yeah. of 28 inches. This is a 26-inch a fish uh, caught in a Peconic River on a six-weight uh, fly rod. And you can see the yes, fly the up fly here. Is here. And this fly probably caught, without exaggeration, yeah. four fish, two bluefish, didn't rip it up, and uh, two bass. But if you had four blues on there, big blues, I would be destroyed. But how many flies get destroyed by other of fish course, too? It's a uh, it's a dynamite fly, and I poor dog that can wag its own tail. That is my creation. It was published um, in the Long Island Fisherman in a Fisherman and, uh, and, 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 and Nori Saltwater, saltwater 2006, 2008. Yes. And now we have the new and improved version. Um, okay, so what else? Uh, did any, I show any the other tools? Any other tools that are most important to a fly tire? Uh, yeah, but let's just do this. Let's, this is the exact <laughs> fly <laughs> on the real and the rod. He said he wanted to do it. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. This is the one that withstood. Can you see it? Put it in the light on the table, honey. Okay. This is the fly that withstood. At least two blues <laughs> and uh, two stripers. Okay. Again, you really don't need the collar. You could experiment. You can make them bigger. You can make them smaller. You could use the hen, which is softer or the rooster, which is uh, stiffer. And uh, generally speaking, when you use uh, not dry flies, but flies um, that sink, uh, you want the softer hackle, the softer feathers. Why? Because they absorb water. Whereas a stiffer one, I don't have one right in front of me now, but the stiffer feathers from the rooster, uh, they're going to be more buoyant. Um, why don't we, ah, why don't we kind of bait them, pun intended, and talk of, show them what we'll be talking about next, on our next show probably, and that is the gimp fly. Again, we covered some of the specifics, not tying-wise, but explaining. On the table. This, on the table. we're going back to, on the table or on uh, here? Yeah. yeah. We're going back to ninth, early 1940s, uh, into the 50s when, um, uh, Donna, that's why I need you here, hon. Sias? Lacey Gee and Erwin Silas. Okay, Silas. now, Gee, G-E-E, -E, is the creator, and his friend Cyrus, 
uh, wrote Irwin. Irwin uh, sorry, wrote uh, an article up called "They Go for the Gimp." Was that an outdoor life? Uh, do you remember the year? It was in the fifties, I believe. Believe so. Yeah, yeah. in the fifties. This is a dynamite fly. We meet, and I say we, Don and I, we're in waders. We meet. Uh, we're in the Catskills. We're in the Adirondacks. We meet. I'm not going to say veteran. If we were a veteran, they would know. But we meet some uh, pretty well, knowledge, uh, well versed, knowledgeable fly mission. They either never heard never of the heard gimp, of or <laughs> they heard about it. They remember it vaguely. It is a dynamite fly. It belongs in everyone's arsenal, in everyone's fly box, along with wild bees. Black and white bullseye fly. <laughs> So this little guy mm -hmm. is going to dry, and um, we'll probably yeah, go out know. fishing with it. Good job. Okay. Good job. Good job. See, it? and if this bothered you, this, see, this is really to catch the fishermen, not the fish here, this here. If that bothers you, cut it off, that little one, what we call, in the service, we call it Irish penance. <laughs> you cut that off. Dynamite fly. Dynamite fly. This is an offset hook. You can see the hook. It's not bent. It's purposely going out. Whereas this owner hook here, this is straight. It doesn't swing out to the left or to mm -hmm. the right. Okay, and you can see on this one, it's a smaller hook, and so I used a smaller eye. Okay. Well, folks, um, I hope that you found this interesting. And again, if you're interested in learning how to tie it step by step, um, Bob's book is available on Amazon. And uh, hopefully, you can. I can. I have the book right here. Yeah, show I can it say again. The name of it: The Fishing Spot Anywhere Handbook for Saltwater and Freshwater. And that's a nice striped bass you caught there. Yeah, and guess what? Look on the handle of the cork. Uh, is that on the cork handle or where? Guess what that's, fly yeah, that's, that is. Oh, yeah, that's your that's no, your bullseye, uh, you forgot, that's your bullseye huh? fly. I uh, <laughs> forgot about that one. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, we thank you for watching, and we hope you have a great evening. Take care, and we'll see you next time.